All right, man. Uh, there's something going on. Friday edition of Cheap Heat. Been a fun week. And um, this guy, man, fresh out the... I don't want to say fresh out the clink, but sort of fresh out the clink. Dominic Mysterio on Cheap Heat, man. Dom, how are you? I'm good. How are you guys? Uh, I'm really good, man. I'm really, really good. Um, I guess I have a lot of stuff I want to ask you about. It's been a very exciting couple of years for young Dominic Mysterio. But before any of that... I do want to know what your time in jail was like, you know, day to day. It wasn't fun. You know, uh, I had to endure some some hardships that I that I didn't think I was going to have to go through. And I think it uh, at the end of the day, realizing that I had to go back out there and be with mommy is what got me through the days, through those tough times, you know, <laughs> being in, in, in that dark cell and realizing that I had to go out there and, and mommy was by herself. I, uh, I had to do what I had to do. No, nah, I mean, that's, did you, did you, um, did you like latch on to any groups or were you in there kind of like solo? I don't want to specify yeah. what happened in there. Cause it's, uh, if I speak too much, you know, I don't, I don't want to get in too much trouble with what happened in there. There's a, there's a code. So I don't want to speak on it. too. You, much. you already, you already have an understanding of the code. That's pretty good. Yeah. You know, you gotta, as soon as you get in there, you gotta know. You got to hit the biggest guy in there, the biggest and the toughest guy in there. Once you do that, oh, you, you pull that, you pull that move. You walk into the yard and you just straight up roll up on someone. It wasn't at it wasn't at the yard. It was at lunch. Someone tried to come in there and, and take my food, and I just I wasn't having it. Mm. And uh, mommy told me I had to do what I had to do in order to see her. So you did what you had to do. Any chance now? Just just from your opinion, any chance that a good man like your dad, Ray Mysterio, would have been able to endure what you endured? No. There's no way, and I don't. I think uh, your first mistake was starting off by calling him a good man. I mean, he's a he's a know. decent man. He's a you have to admit, Dom. He's a decent man. Explain decent to me. What is your definition of decent? I think he's I think he's honest and hardworking. I don't think I don't think he's honest. He wasn't home. He wasn't home to to honestly tell me where he was or what he was doing or how he loved the fans more than he loved his family. But you know, it's a that's another. Uh, we'll get into that some other time. All right, yeah, we'll 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 work our way back around. Uh, let's let's move on because I understand the the jail thing's a negative thing, and we want to focus on the positive, which is you mentioned it, uh, mommy. I mean, have you been? Let me say this before before that fateful day when you and Rhea linked up. What had you? Did you know her well prior to that? Had you been observing her? Like, did you have any thoughts on her prior to? The judgment day happening. No, other than her beating me up, <laughs> you know, on a on a weekly basis. I think that's. I think she was the one that kind of got into me because she was like, you know what, this kid's uh, I'm beating him up too easily. And then I I even mentioned it before. Once she choked me unconscious in the ropes in that corner, I was like, you know what, there's something here. Well, you are a really demented. You are a really demented individual, Dom. No, I don't. I don't see it that way. I just think it was a it was eye opening experience. <laughs> now, uh, how much fun has it been though? Like how? As, as, like I told you when I saw you recently, I, I've mentioned this, and I mentioned this to Rio when I saw her too. Man, like it doesn't always work that like people coming together elevates everybody, but like both you and Rhea are decidedly more a definitive version of yourselves than you were prior to working together. Would you agree with that? I agree. I think uh, I, I'm not going to speak for her, but uh, I think where I was at before, I just didn't, I didn't know what was, what was going on. I was lost. And uh, she came in with some guidance, you know, she came in with some guidance, told me what to do, helped me out with the judgment day, you know, welcomed me into her family. And it was, a, uh, it's, uh, it's been a lot of fun, man. Now let let's go back if you if you don't mind let's go back to a time prior to any of this stuff to a, a different a different day and age when you were on better terms with your dad. Okay. Your childhood. Uh, what is Dominic Mysterio's first recollection of being at work with your dad? Do you have an earliest memory? Being at work with him, or my first memory of him like wrestling uh, let's go with both start with that your first memory of him wrestling my first memory of him wrestling is getting hit in the head by jeff jarrett with the guitar which is a great memory to have 
you know, that's, that's, uh, that's my, believe it or not. And I'm, this is, this is complete 100% the truth. The yeah. first time I saw my dad on TV, he jumped off the ropes and he got hit in the head with, with the guitar by Jeff Jarrett. Oh, so that's my first, that's my first memory of him. Did you cry? Like, were you upset? Mm, I think I was scared because I didn't know what was happening. And I, I instantly turned to my mom and I was just like, what the hell? Like, like what's going, what's going on here? But uh, looking back at it now, it was probably a good thing. You know, he probably deserved that. No, you know, no, what did, of course. What did he do to deserve that? That's right. my question. Yeah, uh, the but, Double J was probably right. Yeah, 100%. Looking back at it now, Double J was definitely right. <laughs> but um, but then my first memory with him going to work, I think, well, let's start off with the flight, right? Okay. He gets he gets first class, you know. He he's sitting there first class, but a little eight year old Dom gets sent to the back. No, and no, I don't think he did that. He are sent, you serious? He sent you to coach as a child while he stayed in first class, living the luxury life. Yeah, yeah. He he's the one that got the the fresh mimosas, the breakfast, <laughs> the sitting down while I was in the back, and not even a window seat where I can you know please try don't, to cuddle up and sleep. Please don't tell me he put seat. you in a middle seat. No. He it cannot. was a middle seat. Yeah. Wow. Believe it or not. So and those were my first memories of traveling with my dad. And then we get to the arena and it just he just puts me in a corner of the locker room. He's like, don't I, I can't even look into the locker room. It's a corner like looking into like a corner. Like I can't look at anything else, what's going on. But you know, that's 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 my dad for you. Did you did you did you do you remember the first superstars you met outside of your dad, of course? Yeah. Edge was one of them. Mm-hmm. Really? Mm-hmm. Interesting. Okay. Uncle, good old Uncle Edge. Yeah. You know, we've all we've all seen what happens to him when he when he messes with the Judgment Day. Yeah. But yeah, so Edge was one of them. Randy was another one. Wow, young uh, young Randy when he was like your age young, now. Yeah, I think even younger. Even probably. younger, probably probably like twenty twenty one. Yeah. Yeah, uh, young Randy, uh, Undertaker, Big Show. <laughs> Corey Wilson, uh, Trish Stratus, Lita, the Hardys. Like I just have, I remember I have, there's a whole album of pictures of me as a little kid with like literally anybody you can name. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. And did you know Eddie before anyone else? Yeah. Yeah. Cause he would come over to the house, um, beforehand, whether it was before the shows or whatnot, he would, he would be at the house. And even before I started traveling with my dad, he was, a he would come over whenever WWE was in San Diego or in LA, somewhere close by. He was always at the house. And you told me, if, uh, you've told the story before, but it's a pretty funny story about how when you guys did the angle uh, in D that, that culminated in DC with the custody of Dominic Mysterio uh, papers ladder match, that you were paid for that. That was your first working gig. Correct. And you remember them being like, no, you're going to get paid for this. Yeah, that's what that's what got me to to do this the whole spiel, because they were like, well, because my dad was like, hey, we want you to do this thing there, you know, if you're OK with it. And I was at the time, I was unsure about it. I was like, I don't know if I want to do this. I was in school. I didn't want to. Not that I enjoyed school, but I enjoyed being at, with my friends. Right. At you don't want to miss out on and, things. Right. Yeah. So then as soon as he was like well, you're going to get, they're going to pay you for it. And I was like, hmm, all right, now we're speaking my language, right? <laughs> Even at a young age. You, what were you, like seven? Yeah, I was like seven or eight. Okay. But even then I understood the business. And did they, and did they explain to you what the, what the story was like? Cause it's, it's a yeah. sort of complex story for a child to understand. For sure. It was, uh, so the way I remember it, they told me and it went in one ear and out the other. Um, because I was, it, to me, I was out there just having fun, you know, and especially cause Eddie sat me down, him and my dad sat me down and told me like how it was going to play out, what was going to happen. Um, I'll tell you one thing. I definitely don't remember Eddie prepping me for how intense he was going to be, <laughs> how that was, uh, that kind of just came in organically. Um, but that's just, that's just Eddie being Eddie. You know, I remember being in the corner at SummerSlam and him just yelling at me like, you're going to know what it means to be a Guerrero. And then his hand comes up and I like, as a kid, I've, I've said it before as a kid, I thought that he was genuinely going to hit me. Um, and like something was going to happen because like, I, 
dude, it was so intense. Like the look in his eyes, his veins just popping out and he was just jacked to the gills and yelling at me, me having nowhere to go, just sitting back in the and had you And at this point um, in your life, you've never taken like acting lessons or anything like that, right? Like you haven't performed no, at all. No, these were all genuine reactions of me, like scared and like terrified and not wanting to be out there because I was I was genuinely camera shy. You know, I didn't like uh, it wasn't fun for me to like be in front of a camera because I didn't know what to do. They were just like, yeah, be yourself, because I guess my scared and shy look was what they wanted anyways. (laughs) So it just ended up working out. Let's talk about your hair back then. What what was what was the decision with the blonde hair as a as a child? The bleached blonde hair. (laughs) So it's a, it's a it's, funny story. Actually. That's why you're really mad at your dad, isn't it? It's, it comes from the one. It was his idea. Was it? It was his idea. We were on vacation with the family and we walked by this hair salon and there's this picture of a guy with bleach blonde hair. My dad goes, you would look really cool with that. And I was like, do I really? And he goes, yeah, you'd look really cool. You should do it. And I was like, I don't know if I want to do it. But my little cousin at the time was like, I'll do it. So once he signed up, I was like, Sure, I'll do it. And it was uh, it was probably one of the worst things that I've done. Um, How long did that last just, for? The, before you guys saw it, it was fully bleach blonde. Like it was like, yeah. When I got to WWE at at the time, it was already like kind of like little stripes of bleached. But like before that, it was like fully bleached, like almost like Cody Rhodes bleached. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So I came in with the little stripes afterwards. <laughs> now <clears throat> did eddie after you guys would like do things in the ring and eddie would be there screaming at you would he then immediately when you got backstage ex- be like hey you good like ex- like talk to you yes and no uh SummerSlam was the only time that it took him a little bit extra to like cool down and come and talk to me um just because i know there was like a like a something happened with the finish well yeah well um, vicky with, vicky with, vicky's not there yet yeah so vicky wasn't there but like as a kid i don't know what, what's going on with all of this right? right i just know that i i did my part in trying to shake the ladder and then uh we go to the back and i just i see eddie just losing it like freaking there's like there you well, you've been backstage you see the the big ass crates where it's just like and he's losing it like flipping those and just like slamming them I remember my mom and dad were kind of just like, it was like a group hug almost to where they were kind of like, didn't want me to see that side of them or, or protecting me from it. And then right after he, I just remember him coming over still all sweaty and just like cooled down. And he was like, Hey, I'm sorry. So <laughs> he just, like, he was that frustrated just because he wanted everything he did to be perfect. Perfect. He was a, like, I knew him as like, I didn't know him as a performer. I knew him as uncle Eddie at the time. Right. So now looking back at it and hearing all these stories of how much perfectionist he was and how he wanted everything to be perfect. Like I can, I can see that, you know, and even me at the time, like even me now, like if there's things that I feel like I can do in the match better, like I'll beat myself up on it. Like I'll, I'll look back at the match 20, 20, 30 different times. And I'm like, this, this sucks. Like I should have done this so much better, even if it's just like a little misstep. Right. And I can see how he could get upset from that, especially with such a big match and leading up to like the lead up to it with, you know, his best friend and this kid. And it's like, it was a lot going into it. And I think that he just wanted everything and every little bit of it to be perfect. And I think it was, you know, I think the way the the match played out and how everything worked out, it was absolutely, it was great. Um, If you don't know the story about like that, she wasn't, Vicky wasn't there as quickly as she was, you wouldn't notice it. Like it's not noticeable. It's fine. Exactly. Like I didn't even know that that was a thing until most recently when I started doing like interviews about the whole custody match, they're like, did you know that Vicky had missed? And I was like, what? This was like, I didn't, I didn't know it was a thing. Like even back then, I I just thought he was upset that he lost. Like, I think it's a fun, I think it's a fun tidbit to, to see him. If, because if you look close, you could hear him like yelling, like Vicky, where are you? Like, so that's like a neat tidbit, but like, yeah, it didn't actually, that really does speak to how much of a perfectionist he was. Cause it was a great match and the story was fantastic. And that leads me to a thing I wanted to ask you. Have you, I was thinking the other day. Um, I was watching you. I went up in the crowd for your match, uh, for the, well, it wasn't your match, but the match that you were involved in the judgment day match and you came out and I mean, you're just a heat magnet. People just hate your guts. And 
I, I, you, there may be no one who can elicit booze right now faster than you. You get it immediately. And then when you they kicked you out, and when you came back in, obnoxiously, you immediately hit the eddy and troll the entire crowd. And it just got me thinking about how cool it is. Like, I feel like no one would appreciate more what you're doing to get the crowd riled up than Eddie, who was willing to do anything to set the crowd on fire. Have you gotten agree, a chance? Man. Have you gotten a chance to talk to Vicky about what you've been doing? Uh, very, very little. You know, just like I get goosebumps, man. Just every time, like I talk about him, and like, or even he gets brought up, and I, I know, and I understand that in no way, shape, or form do I hold a candle to this man in ring or or anything that he's done and i understand that um but with that being said i will use everything to my advantage that he used to like because obviously the people hate it and they hate me for doing it <laughs> so it's like like it at the end of the day that's 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 uncle eddie that's dad you know that, that and, and wwe storyline that is that is my dad so i'm gonna i'm gonna steal whatever i can and i'm gonna use it to my advantage um but being able to to talk to vicky it's been like little things here and there where she'll reach out and she's like, I love what you're doing or like, I'll reach out to her and like, Hey, like hopefully this is okay. Little things like that. And uh, I just, I never want any problems with the girl family. It's all love and respect you know, at, the, at the end of the day. And um, so you just cover yeah, man, You just, uh, you just cover your bases and make sure she's good with everything you're doing. Yeah. And even with, uh, even before it all started, I, uh, I, I forgot who I had mentioned it to. And I was like, Hey, can I, I was like, can I reach out to, to Vicky or someone and let them know, like, is, if this is okay. Cause like once I started growing up the mullet and like the side by side started coming out, I was like, this is you know, it's getting a little out of hand. Right. You want to make sure everyone understands what the, what the actual like thought process is. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, I don't, I don't ever want them to think that like, um, taking advantage or, using it for a certain thing but like at the end of the day it's all love and respect for for eddie you know and uh and admiration to what he did and and i always like to say that without me even noticing or even him him and my dad nudged me into this business when i was eight years old you know he planted that seed and was like without even without me even knowing that i was going to be in this and i uh i'm forever grateful yeah i have to imagine that when he sees you hitting the shimmy and the booze come in, I just have to imagine Eddie smiling, like just like this is so cool. Like uh, it's man, it, it, it's it's wild. Believe, man. believe it or not, sorry to cut you off. No, I please. feel his presence in there. Like when certain times, man, there's I know he's there. Like and it's just there's no there's no other explanation for what's happening other than like Eddie. Like why would we be in the middle of nowhere and there's people chanting Eddie chants like or Eddie's your dad, or Eddie Jr. It's like, he's he's just always there, man, and it's really awesome. Um, you also, have you, do you ever talk to any of the guys and girls? Like, he, I mean, listen, let's be clear. Your, your quote-unquote real dad, Ray, um, <laughs> is a legend also, but it's different because he's been around. So all of the young people there, they know your dad. They've gotten used to the fact that like, oh man, there's Ray Mysterio. I, I see him with his mask off. Like, I know, I know him. Like, that's a... Whereas Eddie is kind of like a mystical being to a lot of like the kids growing up. Like if you talk about Eddie to a Sasha or a Bailey or anyone of sort of that generation, like he is everything. Do you, do you ever have conversations with the other superstars? They must like be like, oh my God, I can't believe you worked. Cause essentially as a kid, you not only knew him, you worked with Eddie Guerrero. Yeah. And that's that uh, man it's such an honor and such a blessing to be able to even say that, you know, that I got a chance to work with Eddie, like as a kid, man, like that's so such a, a blessing to be able to be a part of that. But I've never really had any conversations with, uh, with any of the superstars like that, but there's a uh, one story that I I've shared it before and I hope she's okay with me sharing it. Um, we were in, I believe it was El Paso where Eddie's, uh, his grave is. And, uh, my dad and I went to go visit it uh, a couple years ago and Peyton Royce, uh, she, Cassie Lee, she was sitting there crying. Like, I, I want to say she was like, just like emotional there, like mourning him. And like, I can't say that she's ever met him. I can't, I don't, I don't know if like he ever like 
obviously he had a huge impact on her life, but like, I don't think they've ever conversated. I don't think they ever met. And like, just to see that impact, she was there by herself. Wow. Like, and like seeing that is like, and my, I remember my dad pulling her aside and was like, like, this means the world, you know? And it's like, it's, it's really cool to see the impact that he had on people that he didn't even meet and just are part of this business now. And it's like, it's a, it's really, it's really cool to see. And especially for me, you know, like you said, being able to work with him, it was such a blessing and to be a part of it. You, your, your aura, I think has changed a bit. I remember you when you, not when you, you first showed up in 2019, right? Yeah. Uh, ending of 2019, but I didn't wrestle until 2020. You didn't wrestle until 2020. And how how much did you get in again before the pandemic started? Like matches? Yeah. None. None. My you, first my first match was against Seth. The first match was against Seth right after the pandemic started. Yeah. So which is which is by the way, what a bizarre what a bizarre experience that must have been. What was it like for you? Before I get back to how you've I, I've watched you sort of evolve just in the locker room, how how weird was it or interesting or fun was it when the crowd started coming back like you you had such a bizarre way to start your wwe career yeah it was honestly super super surreal you know because i i got to experience that crazy crowd from survivor series in 2019 with my dad against brock i hit brock with the 619 the frog splash and i can hear the crowd you know you can feel it and then i disappear for a little while and i come back and there's no crowd you know, there's, uh, there's screens and it's like, you get this kind of virtual sound. And to me, it felt almost not, not like the same, but like, I had forgotten what that first, cause it was so brief. I had forgotten what that was like. So then once I started doing all this stuff at the PC during the pandemic with no crowd and kind of just like a, like a voice reaction, it was like, to me, I was pumped. I was excited to be there either way. You know, I was excited to be, to finally be able to showcase what I can do and kind of just start my my wrestling journey. But then July 2021 comes around and it's like, I'm debuting again with the crowd for the first time. And I'm alongside Edge and my dad against Roman and the Usos. Like, dude, like you can't, like, you can't ask for a better, like, I'm, I'm so blessed and so fortunate to be able to be in the positions that I'm in. Cause like, that's so crazy, man. Like I lit, I debuted in 2020 at SummerSlam against Seth Rollins to later re-debut in front of a live crowd and tag along Edge and Ray, who are two of the best to ever do it. Not to knock them for what they've done to my Judgment Day fam, but against Roman and the Usos, who are the top or the creme de la creme right now. So it's like it's just that's crazy. And it was uh, in and it was in Texas, right? Yeah, it was like, in Texas. Like serious that. Mysterio was, country where people love you guys. Like it was, and we had the tag titles at the time too. So it's like it just makes it that much sweeter. You know, it's it's so crazy to to look back and see what I've done in these not even three years of my career. And and how green were you at that Survivor series? Like you said, you hit the frog splash but like in 2019, did you know what you were doing? I'm still green, dude. I don't, <laughs> like, I don't like, I still don't know what I'm doing half the time. I just got to hope I'm doing it the right way, you know? Um, but that frog splash is the first time I've ever jumped off the top ropes on Brock. That was the first time I've ever tried a frog splash at, at any point in time. Cause like all my training had just been very uh, basic, just stuff like that. So when they asked me if I could, I was like, yeah, sure. I, I never, I never said no, I couldn't, or no, I've never tried this. I was just like, yeah, I'll do it, and then hopefully it worked out. So had you had you done at least pretend frog splashes as a, as a kid off the couch? I mean, like yeah, yeah. When I was a kid, you know, <laughs> right. off, off, I, I would, I remember getting to the hotel rooms as a kid with my dad, and I would have specific fifteen minutes to jump on the beds because that was all the time. I, he, we would get complaints because of how much I would just be throwing pillows and he would be slamming me. So it's like I had my set 10 minutes and that was it. Um, so I definitely did practice them as a kid, but once I got older, I never I never actually practiced it in a ring until that first That's, time I hit the frog splash on Brock. That is absolutely insane to me. I, I just don't understand. Like that to me, it says either something about your basic level of just innate athleticism, confidence, whatever it, whatever it is that comes from being a multi-generational superstar because you guys are kind of different. I mean, with all, it does seem like you guys kind of have a cheat code to some extent. Like there is something in the DNA 
you know, to you. Like, because otherwise, how can you explain in that spot being able to even do that? Yo, I've stood, when I stand on the apron and look at how high the top, top turnbuckle is, I'm like, I don't know how they even do this. This is very high up. And you hit a, you hit a pretty mean frog splash. Yeah, it's a, uh, I don't know, man. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's, if it's just sitting and watching it my whole life to where I tell people sometimes, dude, I just close my eyes and my body does the rest. Like it's, it's honestly crazy. That is, um, it, that's, that's wild. So back to your personality now or, or how you, you, you sort of seem to carry yourself. I've seen you, you, you've become, I, I've just seen you get more comfortable in your own skin. Like, um, at first, obviously things are different now. You're no longer working with your dad. Um, you're not even on the same show as your dad. So I remember like the first time I saw you, the, the TV locker room at WWE is an interesting place because it's sort of been sullied by people like me who, who get dressed there also. But originally, as I've been told by the veterans, the TV locker room was kind of a hallowed space because once you were older and you'd been around the boys forever and you didn't have anything to prove, you go to TVL because it's quiet and it's low key and you'll find the other vets there. And it's still like that to an extent, except there are you know, a couple of jabronis like myself who are around. But like there'll be JBL and Booker and people like your dad come in there. Randy might come in there, whatever. And so at first I remember seeing you in TVL with your dad and you guys were tagging together. So obviously you were attached at the hip because you were working together. But I also have to imagine at that point there was a certain level of him showing you the ropes. No, like I'm just you hanging out with your dad so you could learn. And now I don't ever see your dad. At this point, when I'm at pay-per-views, you're on your own. You're doing your own thing, and you move around in a different way. Have you felt a difference and a different level of comfort and in growing into your own? Yeah, I definitely have. You know, it's a, uh, it's a little weird because I had been travel like I've been doing this my whole life essentially. You know, like traveling with him and just I remember being in TVL since I was eight nine years old. You know, with with guys like Edge and Booker and JBL and my dad. So it's uh for me it was very normal to walk in there with him and just kind of get dressed with him and like you said be attached to the hip, and um, but as we started you know separating a little bit and uh, he wasn't on t at TV anymore, I re there's there's unwritten rules in uh in the locker room and in WWE that you kind of have to learn on your own and luckily I was I was fortunate enough to to see these rules play out since I was a kid so I kind of knew what what I had to do so once uh once dad stopped showing around and it was more me I knew I couldn't be going into TVL so I, I walked into male talent how I should and just started getting more comfortable going in there and like I would be with Priest or I would be with Finn or or at this point I'll throw Austin in there at the time you know I'd be walking in with Austin and it's like I had to get comfortable because I was always I was always with my dad I was always like and people would ask me like hey how are you gonna is it going to be weird when your dad's not here? And I was always like, ah, I think so. I was like, I'm always ready for him. I'm, I'm ready. I was like, he, he could go. I'd, I'd be okay. But like, it was, it was definitely weird. You know, it was weird. Cause I, I had been, it's, it was the same routine since I was eight years old. We'd fly in together. We'd get to the arena. We'd walk to TVL. And it's like, once he stopped being there, I, I was like, all right, what do I do now? You know, my, my guide was kind of gone. So I had to, learn the ropes on my own and it was like you said he, he was definitely teaching me and like showing me what to do here and there and without me even kind of noticing it and then once i was on my own i knew what i had to do so it was kind of just it just kept going so he didn't have to tell you like hey by the way when i'm not around you got to go to male talent like you can't be no you knew that no he didn't yeah i i automatically knew when he's not that when he's not when he wasn't there because like I, I, whenever we were tagging together, when I first started, whenever they needed us, it was always the both of us. So it was better for us to be together at that time. So it wasn't like them running the male talent to come and get me or, or TVL. Um, so I would just roll with them to TVL. And once he, once he started leaving and he wasn't there the first time, I, I walked by TVL, TV locker room, and I was like, yeah, I'm not supposed to be in here. And I didn't even bother walking in. So <laughs> I just walked straight to male talent. But by the way, it's, I could see how it's a little intimidating, like 
to then walk into male talent because you haven't been there before and it's like the rest of the locker room. They're, sure. they're in there playing video games like, you know, yeah. Usos and New Day are playing games. There's people talking-ish There's, and, and you had yet to be a part of that. Like, I just relate to yeah. the... It's very high school-like in a lot of ways, the experience at For WWE, sure. And right? it's, it's funny, too, because someone... I, I won't specify who, but someone came up to me and he was... And they were like, is your dad here? And I was like, I was like, nah, he's not here this week. And they're like, ah, so you're in male talent this week. <laughs> so they knew when when my dad wasn't there because I'd be with him at the TV locker room. So when he wasn't showing up, I'd go to male talent. And they're like, oh, your dad's not here today? <laughs> I'm like, nah. And they're like, ah, okay. Playing with the big boys now. Um, all right. Yeah. Uh, that was some fun inside baseball. That's really cool. Um, how how much would it mean for you to share the ultimate stage with your dad at a WrestleMania? You know, I think it would uh it would definitely be a full story moment or a full circle moment. Um I just don't know if he'd do it, man. I don't know if he if he has it in him to to put his hands on me. Um to take that proved, to take that ass whooping he'd get from you is what you're saying also. Yeah, I mean he 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 would he would do it when I was a kid, you know, he'd be more than happy to come home and put hands on me and discipline me when I was a kid, but now that I'm <laughs> five six inches taller than him and uh don't, don't bury your dad like that uh, is it not is this not true is this not factual <laughs> he is five four i am six foot one so you think he's scared of you is what you're saying i don't know if he's scared of me but he definitely doesn't want any yeah. i'll just put it that way i've like i said i've i've put my hands on him i've six one nine him thrown him against the post i've betrayed him i don't know what else i could do at this point you've and, ruined uh, his holidays yeah, I've ruined his holidays. I've I've gone over to his parents' house, my grandparents' house. My grandpa basically took in Rio already. You know, he's abuelo, and uh, I just don't know if he has it in him to put his hands on me. To be but honest. you would do it. You would do it. I I would do it in a heartbeat. Are you kidding me? You it's, versus uh, your, you versus your dad as, at Maine. As soon as as soon as I end my dad, I am walking into TV locker room. <laughs> Oh, you'll never be back even in male talent again. You'll just jump right to the veteran status of you took I'm, out the I'm whole just, dog. I, I already beat AJ Styles, so I'm just gonna I'm I'm gonna just continue my reign of a uh, of this uh, legendary uh, TV locker room talent. That I'm gonna <laughs> take out. Oh, you know what? You should put book on that list. You saw he showed up in the Rumble. Yeah, he took care of me. Unfortunately, <laughs> you know, I, I, I walked in there thinking that I could get one up on book because I was like, he hasn't been in the ring for years. I right. go up on him and he turns it right back around. And uh, that's that's the experience for you. Well, listen, you got to that means that means there's a receipt coming. So book needs to watch his back. Um, what do you think the ceiling is for for Rhea Ripley? Like how how great do you think she could be? Man, there is no ceiling for her. like she's only what, 26 27 maybe i don't even think so she's 27 like, yeah I, yeah that's what i'm saying like i'm sorry i'm sorry mommy she, i'm probably gonna catch heat for that <laughs> but yeah man the the she has no ceiling she's, she's 26 she's at the top of her game she's 26 there october 11th 20. just so you don't mess up by the way okay you don't want to mess up this relationship october 11th october 11th okay she'll be 27 i gotta put that down on, I gotta put that down on my calendar um <laughs> but yes keep going yeah, sorry dude she's so she, she's the best you know outside what you guys see on TV is is a mean mommy Rhea Ripley, right? But to us and to the Judgment Day fam, she's the nicest person ever. So I don't see why she shouldn't be the best to ever do it in this company. You know, she has everything as far as physique. you got the character. She's got the look. She's got literally everything. So I don't see why she shouldn't be able to become uh, – what? How, how many times has Charlotte won? She's a 13 time. I think 14. 14 i don't see why Rhea shouldn't be a 15 or 16 time so let's just put it that can is Rhea stronger than you yes Nothing. yes without a question i'm not even gonna be like no you know what she uh, no yeah she's stronger than me and i'm not gonna discuss her fighter over anything because <laughs> what mommy says goes smart rule to live by um Dominic, I, I speak for all fans of WWE and saying we are enjoying the hell out of what you're doing, man. It is. I didn't know it was going to play out this way. I, I, I really, I think everyone assumed you'd be good, but no one knew that this was going to be the path. And it's been entertaining and surprising and mean at times and funny at times. And it's been awesome, man. So congrats on everything. And I appreciate you taking the time. Yeah, thank you guys. Thank you very much for having me.